Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to hear three scary stories that happen to people. Make sure to stick till the end of the video to not miss the outcome. So let's start. Hi, I hope you guys are doing well. To fully understand the story, let's backtrack a little. I lost my uncle Edward to pneumonia in 2014. At the time I was in elementary school, and I still have the image of his lifeless body sitting in that casket burned into my mind. A few years later I learned from my dad, my uncle's brother, that my uncle Edward was an alcoholic and drug addict. My dad had a lot of problems with my uncle lying and stealing. One story that my dad told me about my uncle stands out among the rest, however. This happened at some point in the late 90s. At the time, my uncle and my dad were living with my nana. My dad noticed that the windows on his car were shattered. My dad confronted my uncle about it. My uncle said that kids were responsible. If you have ever had to deal with an addict, you will know that they are not very truthful. My dad knew that my uncle was trying to hide something so my dad gave him a good beating until he told the truth. My uncle did not have a car so he stole my dad's car to go meet with his dealer. My uncle owned the dealer money, but he didn't have any so he drove off. The dealer shot at the car as my uncle drove away. My uncle was not injured in the incident. This may not be all that scary to some of you, but I thought it was a scary story. Now, I have to live with the fact that I had an uncle who I didn't get to know. When I was younger, I'd go visit my grandparents all the time. They lived in a one-floor house with an unfinished basement. I never liked it down there, it felt small for a big basement. There was a little door down there that was for storage, and I always got a horrible feeling when going close to it. And let me add that this was a newer house that was about six years. Now during the time I was about six or seven, I felt so uncomfortable going down there. Even when I was with someone I didn't like it. I remember going down there with my grandma to help with something. She had to run upstairs because someone rang the doorbell. She said she would be right back, even though she knew how I felt about being alone down there. But I nodded and said, okay. She was gone, and I was alone, and I started to get a bad feel in the pit of my stomach. I didn't move and didn't want to. Even though the lights were on now, this is where everything started happening, and it still gives me chills. The lights started to flicker, and I started to hear noises, and what sounded like talking, and it was not coming from upstairs, but in the storage room. I heard someone say my name here is the part that freaks me out the most. The voice sounded like my grandma. I was confused as hell how am I hearing her when she is upstairs. I didn't want to move, but me being the curios when I am, I started moving towards the storage room door. The closer I got worse, the bad feeling came. When I got to the door, the lights turned off in the basement. I wanted to run upstairs and hide, go home somewhere that wasn't the basement. I heard my name again for the second time my grandma's voice asking me to open the door to help her so I did and I regret it. I couldn't see anything it was pitch black. I couldn't hear anything but faint laughing that felt like forever, but then the laughing stopped and the lights turned back on in the basement and I felt a little bit better with the lights back on, but the downside I could see a little in the storage room. I saw a small clown doll in the storage room and my grandma hates clowns with a passion and wants nothing to do with them. So why is there a clown doll? I have no damn idea. Then the lights turned on in the storage room. I saw red that looked like blood all over the place. I screamed and blacked out. And the next thing I knew I was laying on the couch. My grandma looking at me and asking if I was okay. I have no idea if that was real or a dream. But it sure as hell felt real. If you have any ideas please let me know. So this happened when I was 11 years old in the 6th grade, and listened to my teacher, sometimes I'm just always quiet. But one day I was on my 6th period, which is gym, and we do laps, and then when get to the end we make a turn, and then there is this big fence, and then when I was running I saw a 30 year old guy waving with a wired grin, but can't tell who be waving it so I kept running. 
Gym was over so I packed up and getting ready to leave home when I was going to the gate in front and when I exit I saw the same guy no he was looking but he was not grinning no more he was smiling no so I started to speed walk because I was getting scared. After I got far from my school I turned back and did not saw him so I was relieved. When I was walking a blue car pulled up to me and rolled his window down a little bit could not see his face all I heard was his voice he said you look like a nice kid and smart I just smiled and said thank you and then he said my full name I was shocked and then told him how he knew my name and then rolled his window all the way down and it was the same guy with the creepy smile I ran and turned back and his car standing there I was only five minutes away so I kept running and after I made it to my house I was sweating my hands shacking and went outside and locked all my doors and window and slept in my bed when I woke up and want to see what time it is and was 11.32 p.m. And I was thirsty so I wanted to get a water so I got up to get a water by the time I went to the fridge to get cold water I heard a knock. So I went to see who it was and see in the window. And what I saw shocked me it was the smiling guy with an item in his hand I could not see because the outside lights were off. I thought I was going to faint I ran to my mom and dad's room and tried to open it it was locked so I banged loud that they got mad at me for waking them up and I told them there was a creepy guy outside our house so my dad went and staying with my mom and when my dad he saw nothing and then he heard a sound so he went staying with my mom and then I heard a scream and then my mom called the police and the police arrived and my dad holding the man down and he had kitchen knife and was breaking my window the police arrest him and took him after two days the police gave information to my dad what happened so my dad told me the guy has been stalking me every time I walk home to school and watch me in my window I try to tell my friends but they don't trust me in 14 years old no and what would have happened if I kept sleeping and did not told my dad the guy would have broke my window and killed me.